Tata Steel for now. We have the management with us, uh, Mr. T V Narendran, who is patiently waiting by. Let's uh, take it across to him, sir. While the river uh, prices were okay in the quarter gone by, internationally the prices have dipped October onwards. Uh, is that what uh, you're witnessing and what could be the reason uh, for the same if you could tell our viewers? And where do you see steel prices move uh, going forward amid uh, all the worries uh, regarding uh, slowdown seen in Chinese markets? So you're right. I think we've had a 3,500 crore impact uh, uh, on the debt because of the translation of our overseas debt. Uh, it does impact us in raw material prices in terms of the coking coal that we buy. Uh, we buy 70% of our coking coal from overseas. So it does have an impact. But overall, when you look at it from a Tata Steel perspective, a weaker rupee is a net positive for us because it gives us stability in the market and uh, which allows us to absorb the increased uh, cost uh, because of the impact of the rupee on the coal prices. So, so net net, we typically are better off uh, in a weaker rupee. It also makes us competitive on dollar terms. You know, this is exactly what happened to Russia three, four months, uh, three, four years back when the ruble dropped uh, significantly. The Russian steel makers became very competitive because most of their costs were uh, uh, ruble costs and converted into dollars, it looked good. So in some sense, in India, when the rupee uh, depreciates, a lot of our costs which are in rupees look good in dollars and that helps the competitiveness of the industry. So Bhushan Steel contributed well to the overall numbers. Do you believe that uh, you know they have been uh, able to weed out the inefficiencies in the plant? Is uh, it uh, lagging the India EBITDA per ton uh, with Stellar 19,000 per ton? Do you believe that uh, you'll still be able to add on to synergies coming from that acquisition? So uh, the gap wouldn't be bridged fully because uh, the uh, standalone India numbers, uh, if you take out Bhushan Steel, which is at 19,000, uh, is uh, also helped by the fact that uh, for Jamshedpur and Kalinganagar, 100% of the iron ore is our own iron ore and 30% uh, of the coal is our own coal. As far as Bhushan Steel is concerned, uh, hardly any iron ore is our own iron ore. In fact, we've just started some uh, supplies to Bhushan Steel, but it's not that we have so much iron ore just now to take care of all of Bhushan Steel's needs. Um, and the coal is 100% bought out. So it's a very different uh, dynamic uh, uh, for uh, Bhushan Steel. So our first objective is to see that uh, the Bush and Steel EBITDA uh, matches uh, the EBITDA delivered by some of our peers in the industry who also buy raw materials and then to see what better we can do because obviously there is a lot of work going on on the synergy side. Uh, Bush and Steel will derive the benefit of plugging into Tata Steel's uh, global coal procurement. Uh, Bush and Steel will derive benefit from uh, cross benchmarking with the Tata Steel plants uh, and uh, improving the uh, KPIs of most of the facilities. So there are a number of initiatives happening on the procurement side, in the operation side, the maintenance side and in the uh, marketing and sales side, uh, which will help us, uh, uh, you know, continue to improve the numbers in Bush and Steel. But it will certainly not uh, match uh, what has been achieved uh, by Tata Steel in Jamshedpur and Kalinganagar. Uh, so you've also acquired Usha Martin, uh, which is a big boost to your long products portfolio. Um, what's the logic of acquiring it via Tara Sponge, if you could uh, help us understand that? And how will Tara Sponge uh, fund this acquisition and how will Tata Steel uh, support this whole process? So, uh, if you look at our configuration in India today, we have three big sites in Jamshedpur, Kalinganagar and Angul. So, with these three sites, Angul is a Bushan Steel site. With these three sites, we have the potential to grow our flat products business, which typically is an integrated steel plant kind of structure. Uh, and with these three sites, with the land that we have in these thrites, uh, sites, if we have the appetite and the capital, we can certainly build about 30, 35 million tons of capacity in these three sites. Uh, in long products, we believe that the growth can come through a different model. It could be a distributed production model. It's a different cost structure for long products businesses as compared to flat products businesses. It doesn't necessarily have to be integrated steel plants and you can have far more uh, optimal use of land in terms of smaller facilities distributed closer to markets. So the whole configuration of long products could be very different. So that's why we decided that uh, our long products ambitions are better fulfilled through some of our subsidiary companies. Tata Sponge was already looking at uh, going downstream into long products and so we said instead of building new capacities, we can use Tata Sponge as a vehicle to acquire Usha Martin. And uh, this could be the nucleus of uh, uh, emerging long products business for Tata Steel, where we will look at any other long products assets which uh, may come uh, in our line of sight. 
and uh, develop a structure which is slightly different from the Tata Steel flat products uh, structure. So that was a uh, strategic logic of uh, doing it through Usha Martin and uh, Usha Martin obviously would need support. The board of Usha Martin is discussing it and uh, they have already mentioned that they will probably be a rights issue and Tata Steel will be very supportive of that. Now with your JV, uh, with the Thyssen group coming under the EU radar, uh, how would uh, you, know, you convince them that the JV is not against the merger regulation and it's competitive in nature? Ask us questions, we expected them to do that and uh, I think that's the process uh, in Europe which we have to follow. So we went through phase one where we submitted, uh, we put in our submissions and we were expecting that it would go to phase two which is what has happened. So the EU has asked us some questions on packaging steels because uh, between uh, Thyssen Group and Tata Steel in Europe uh, we become fairly strong in packaging steels. The EU has asked us some questions on electrical steels and the EU has asked us some questions on automotive steels. So we will be addressing the concerns, we will be engaging with them, we will support them in the investigations and they have given themselves 90 working days and uh, we will go through the process. Fundamentally our argument is that um, in today's day and age when you have fairly open markets and material flowing everywhere, you need to be structurally strong in whichever geography you are in. So in India we are privileged to be structurally strong and we can grow and take care of ourselves. But in Europe I think the industry is operating in a mature market, the demand is not growing. So there needs to be greater structural strength in the European industry and I think Arcelor and Ilva coming together. All right, sir. All the very best for all of the endeavors that you're planning to undertake in the coming few quarters and months. 